Hey guys, I am Dr. Kim Sage. Welcome to my YouTube channel and to this series on healing attachment wounds, really the initial disturbance that occurred in childhood. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell, and that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. So today's video is really about vulnerability. We hear this word all of the time. In fact, in some ways it sounds funny, but when your mom's a therapist or psychologist, your kids get very tuned in. <laughs> they can diagnose pretty much everyone and their friends, or at least they know their attachment issues for sure. But we often joke about like, we'll be watching something on TV, like some reality trash TV, and the word vulnerability, it always comes up. It's like, you know, actually in the same episode, it'll come up like 10 times. You know, you need to be vulnerable, be vulnerable. And the way they say it often sounds funny. So I guess I'm getting distracted here, but it really is true. And so what does that really mean? To be vulnerable is really to be open or susceptible to attack, to wound. It's like, you know, there's something there that makes you potentially weakened is the idea. But as we think about it, it's really about opening up your authenticity, the core of who you are, learning how to be intimate, not just in an intimate way, right, but like truly intimate as a human with someone else, is to really be willing to risk and expose yourself. And so in our attachment styles, that can be really, really challenging depending upon the style. Now, of course, if you have a more secure attachment, it's probably not that hard for you, right? Emotions are somewhat safe, and you understand that it's not about dumping vulnerability and sort of trauma dumping or holding all your stuff together and never sharing it, but about truly level by level, little by little, you know, I share vulnerability, you share vulnerability. And this really applies in any safe relationship. I would say not really work, there's, you know, there could be a limit there with appropriate boundaries, but in friendships and romance and ideally in our families of origin. So the idea is that not only do we have to be able to tap into our vulnerabilities, we have to know what they are. And so we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes and a little exercise. And then it's really important also to know your partner's vulnerability. One of the most important things you can know are the top handful of issues that trigger your partner, that make them upset. Because in the, in the really root of attachment theory, if my partner is my shelter in life, if I'm their safe harbor, I'm not gonna do and say things intentionally that are gonna feel like an attack, that are gonna wound them. Now I'm going to do that because that's what we do. We don't do it intentionally, but I wanna be mindful of that. And so if I don't know what my partner's vulnerabilities are, I mean, I might think I know, but I would really encourage you to talk about them, right? To share them. And so let's talk about a little exercise now that really helps you understand your own vulnerabilities. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is really get yourself with your journal into a quiet, mindful place, maybe go for a walk, maybe do it when your pets are just chilling out, there's no big job, or your kids are. Take a walk, go to the beach, go to the trees, go to the park. Getting yourself in some like breathing exercises and slowing down and really allowing the space to emerge where you can really go into your own thoughts and memories and feelings. And think about ways that you might find yourself feeling vulnerable. In fact, I'm gonna put a list in this video of emotions and feelings that might make you feel vulnerable. So I would encourage you to choose from the list at least three to five emotions or feelings or thoughts or something around these issues, right? That these experiences we have that make you feel vulnerable. And then I want you to try to list at least one memory or one incident that goes with each word, right? So if I, for example, chose the words um, maybe scared, right? When I'm scared, it makes me feel vulnerable. I might imagine or bring up an incident where I felt scared, either in a relationship, ideally, or in my life in some way, and I would write about that. And then as I go over the things that, I, that I've written, these, these three to five vulnerabilities, 
I really want to look at, you know, are there themes here? Are there patterns here? Is there a time frame here where this happened more often than not? What are the things that really make me feel vulnerable? What are the feelings or thoughts or emotions in general? What are the experiences? If as you've written down the experiences with these words, you've realized that there's a lot of trauma there, I would encourage you to you know, stop this work on your own and to go find a source of safety in order to work on those things. Although I will say with attachment theory, part of the belief system through the research is that trauma processing can actually enhance a disorganized attachment state, for example. And so for many people with more chaotic attachment or experiences, trauma processing can dig all that up and make it worse. And so the idea is that healing these attachment disturbances and the research shows that can be helpful. And really quickly, how do I know that? From some research done on orphanages with children who were abused by priests, it was found that in this large group of kids in the same orphanage, when they looked at how the kids weathered over time, the research has supported that it was not so much the, the experiences they had because they all had similar ones, it was what they came into the orphanage with. In other words, were they from a very large Catholic family where there was, you know, they're just like lost the caregiver, the primary provider, and so a child or two had to go into the system? Or was it from a very chaotic family where the child was removed? And how did they get there? And why that matters is whatever style they tended to come in with, or, you know, and their, their initial experience, that made a difference in how they handled their life's traumas. And so that is the heart of what complex trauma is from the perspective of attachment theory. It is that our, it is our style that impacts what happens to us on top of later childhood events that are not good for us, right? That are, that are bad experiences. It is the later childhood abuse and that type of stuff that really impacts how we deal with and how it manifests in our lives in terms of like complex trauma. So that's why this series is what it is. I will say, I'll keep saying, you still need to work on your relationships to heal. But don't forget that you don't have to necessarily go do EMDR or other processing therapies to heal. They can be very helpful. I have been trained in EMDR, but it doesn't mean you need it for everything, right? There, it's not indicated for everything. So keep that in mind and maybe do some research. Lastly, I would say if you're in a relationship, I would encourage you to do this exercise with your partner. Sit down, write down your vulnerabilities, and then talk about them. Do we know about each other's vulnerabilities? And how do we want to sort of protect that in each other, knowing that these are our triggers? That is one of the, one of the healthiest ways to approach your relationship. So that is the end of today's video. I will post the stuff I mentioned down below in the list of words and thoughts. I hope you'll find it helpful and I hope you will know that when your vulnerabilities are triggered, depending on your attachment style, that really affects how you then respond, right? So if I'm avoidant and I'm triggered about feeling suffocated, I'm gonna re maybe remove myself emotionally or physically from the relationship. It's a vulnerability when I feel like you need me so much because I had to deactivate my own needs. How dare you need that? That just feels like too much, right? Or same thing with anxious. If I'm feeling like you're trying to, con you know, I'm trying to just, um, you know, get my needs met and I feel rejected by you, even though I'm not being rejected. The vulnerability might be when I don't hear back from you and I can't reach you. And so as a partner, I will try to make sure that at all times, not in a controlling way, but that, you know, you can follow me on my phone or I check in with you. I do things to help regulate you in a loving way, not in a you're trying to control me way, right? So we're gonna go, we're gonna go way more into these styles and issues later, but I hope you will really explore your vulnerabilities because they really are the key to understanding everything from your style to your triggers to how do you want to sort of show up and be loved and love others in a relationship. So thanks for watching guys. Please stay safe and well. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to and um, I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.